going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tuck want to take you along with us for a diverse fall garden harvest. Let's go! Let's start things out by giving you an overview of what the backyard food forest paradise looks like now. It's fall here and the gardens are still pumping out crazy amounts of food. I'm going to be grabbing a bunch of harvests. We're going to start off by grabbing these grapes here, but first I just wanted to give you a shot of, you know, what the backyard looks like. It's pretty incredible that just 10 years ago, this thing was just a normal backyard, all grass, basically a waste of space. I was putting in all this time and effort to just maintain grass, watering it, mowing it and stuff. Now we're putting in some time and effort to maintain a backyard food forest, but we're getting insane amounts of foods. So the payouts we're getting for the investments we're putting in, it's, uh, it's like night and day compared to a regular backyard. Let's start off by grabbing these grapes here. Look at these, absolutely beautiful. Niagara grapes, just take a pan le left here. Look how many grapes are on this vine right here. Look at the color as you come by the sun. Look how they're getting that nice yellow color. Oh, so sweet, so ripe, and so ready. I already harvested a bunch of grapes earlier in the season and we made some jelly. I'm gonna show you the jelly that we made and then we're gonna get even more grapes, some of the purple Catawba grapes, but let's start off with some of these Niagara's here. <laughs> Look at this, man. This is what we love to see. Let's cut this off at the end here and then come back here, cut this branch off. Bang, look at that harvest. <laughs> a little damaged one right there, but look at that. Incredible. I had even more purple grapes, but the birds have been just ravenous and thieves this year, like they usually are. So this is what they left us with. We had to make sure we covered with insect netting because if you don't, they'll just take all of them. Grab a couple more sets right here. Then we're gonna move on because uh, it'd be a while to grab all these grapes. So we had all those grapes there and let's keep moving. We've got so many things to show and grab and uh, it's just gonna be a really fun video today. Tucks around here somewhere too. So go behind you right here. Here's our uh, round of brassicas that's gonna be doing real good for us late in the fall. We're growing them in buckets. We're growing them in raised beds. We're growing them anywhere you can. So I've mentioned it before, but if you don't have a lot of space, that's not enough, a good enough excuse not to grow some of your own food. I gotta share something with you right here that I'm super excited about. This right here is the Zucchino Rampicante. This is the first time I've ever grown it and I will continue growing this, you know, maybe forever. This veggie is incredible. This thing could either be harvested as a summer squash and eaten soft like this, or it could be harvested as a winter squash. The thing about that is it's, it's like incredibly mild and has a very sweet, like delicious flavor to it, surprisingly. So it's like, the usefulness is incredible. I've read that the Italians use it to stuff like their gnocchi and stuff. So it has a delicious flavor. It grows incredibly well. Just, just come low and look how much this one plant has just taken over this section. And there's so many zucchinos on it. Look, one, two, come down this way. Look at this, three, four, and then there's like five or six more just spread throughout the garden. Again, we could let these harden and use them as more of a winter squash because this could be either a summer or a winter squash. So it's really unique in that way. I've also read that it does pretty well against the squash bugs. So if you have an issue with squash bugs, eating a lot of your zucchinis and stuff, try this variety. It might make a huge difference for you. Before I move on, you might notice we've got some new shirts. Me and Tuck just dropped the fall merch at jamesprigioni.com. We're super excited about it. We think it came out fantastic. I love the way it looks. So grab a t-shirt, grab a long sleeve shirt, grab a sweatshirt. I mean, anything you want, it's basically on there. Support the channel, sport it all season, and just, uh, you know, have fun being part of Team Grow. Let's keep going there, though. So much stuff to grab. I'm gonna leave these here. We'll come back for them. We'll circle back around for the zucchinos, but let's grab some more stuff. Come over here. You can see the raised beds. We've got all of our brassicas in here, late season ones. These ones are gonna be producing for us late into the winter. On the right here too, more stuff looking fantastic. We love to see it. Even though it's fall, like I mentioned, we're still growing so many different things. Our flowers are still doing fantastic. We're definitely gonna be putting even more flowers in the garden next year because um, they're just, uh, they bring so much joy to me. I come out and see them and they just, they make me smile. I love them so much. Look at all this stuff we're growing in buckets. It's time to harvest it. I've shown this plant a bunch of times. Now it's time to actually get all the fruit from it because let's just grab all these peppers. This one plant is producing an insane amount of food. Let's just grab all of them real quick. Look at this. This is just, this thing blew me away this year with how much fruit it had. I almost didn't, don't even want to pick them because it just looks so beautiful. 
but let's get all these and allow it to keep producing more. We still have a few weeks till, uh, till the frost comes. And plus, we can be growing this thing in the greenhouse late in the season if we want. We can even overwinter this baby if we want. All those peppers, one plant, look at that. You couldn't paint a picture better than that, in my opinion. Let's grab some of these too. The Jimmy Nardellos, looking really nice. Put those in. The Rosita eggplant, one of the most beautiful eggplants you can grow. Nice shine to them. Look at that. Oh. Let's get these babies. And then here's some more peppers over here. Look at the size of these guys. <laughs> Keep harvesting. Oh, now this one's a little hard to get. We'll get it. Let's grab all these. Then I gotta show you the grapes, dude. They're just, it's been a bumper crop for grapes this year, which is so much fun. We're gonna be making more jelly, more grape juices. <laughs> Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Incredible colors. Come this way though. You gotta see, you gotta see how incredible the grapes are. Look at this. Here's the Catawba grapes. They're really starting to ripen. I'm going to have to grab essentially all of them today because the birds are starting to peck out of them and the bees are going crazy. Everywhere there's just bees and hornets. They love the sweet, sweet grapes. I mean, who doesn't? We've talked about it a lot before, but this is a food forest and a paradise, not just a paradise for people. It's a paradise for all living things. That's the best and worst thing about it sometimes. Let's grab some of these Catawbas. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is why you grow food in the backyard. So you can just have food just hanging above your head. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Let me show you some of the jelly we've made. So our first round of grapes, we made a bunch of jelly. I've already given a lot of jelly away, but this is what we have left. So you can see some of that beautiful color from the Catawba grapes in there, that pink, just, and the flavor. I wish I could share the flavor with you, but it's just so good. Then here's another jelly. This one, we've mixed some of the green grapes with the Catawba grapes, almost like an orange. I really love the look of this pink color. I think it's just striking and absolutely beautiful. So it's a lot of fun. These are some of the best gifts to give away to people, I feel like. So fresh fruit from your garden and is a great gift, but also when you process some of your own stuff, it's like, a, I don't know, it just, it feels like a really gift good gift to give to someone because a lot of people, if they don't grow food themselves, they don't know the difference in the flavor, in the quality, and just the overall, just, you know, the difference between homegrown and store-bought. It's like a, it's like night and day. Let's keep going though. Right over here, we've got a fig. This fig's trying to set up and finish some good figs for us. It's got so many on there. Some are getting really close. This is the brown turkey fig. But once they start getting close, you know, the critters like to come in and grab some of them. So what we're gonna be doing today is grabbing more of the grapes that I showed you later on. We're gonna basically harvest essentially all the grapes because we need to get them before the critters do. And we're gonna, going to be getting a lot of the pears and stuff too. So here's a pear right here, the chajuro. A bunch more were on the ground that I brought inside already, but some big ones are still left. Like look at this one here. Look how perfect this is. You love to see it. This is the Chijuro. This is what we wait months for, to be able to get food this fresh, this good. Look at the color on that. That's what you want to see. That's when it's ripe. Has no green in it. That nice butterscotch color. It, it brings out that incredible butterscotch flavor. So let's get this one too here. Then there's a few more back here. We'll grab, let's get this one. Then I'll grab the rest as we keep moving on. But. I gotta show you a few more things. Let's whip around. There's this one <laughs> variety of tomato, the sweet treats. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite late season tomatoes and I'll show you exactly why. I've mentioned a lot of times my hybrid tomatoes seem to do better later in the season because a lot of times the hybrid have better disease resistance. So as we start late, um, getting later into the season when there's less sun, less, uh, you know, the days are shorter, it's a lot easier to get some of those blight issues. So it seems like the hybrids do really well in those situations. Let's grab a cucumber here. Got another one down here. Still getting great cucumber harvests from the garden. Keep moving this way. Still go cucumbers in buckets. The next round of cucumbers right here. Young cukes doing fantastic growing up a tree. And here's the sweet treats I was talking about. Tell me this thing doesn't look like it'd be in a magazine cover or something. Look at the sets. Look how beautiful it is. A lot of our other tomatoes have slowed down at this point. So one of the reasons our tomatoes have slowed down is because it, we had such a, like a long hot period where the plants were having a tough time putting flowers out. Then all of a sudden, the rain came really heavy. So it split a lot of our tomatoes. This one, 
They didn't split the tomatoes. Beautiful size, beautiful color, that pink blush. What a fantastic tomato that you need to have in the ground if you want good late production. We still have a few more things to grab in this garden before we move on to the next one. Look at the Liberty Apple, the most disease resistant apple tree on the planet. Look at the sheer number of fruit on this thing. This has a beautiful balance of the amount of fruit for the size of tree. And so the fruit is getting big. It's getting that beautiful blush to it. So let's harvest some of them so we can really start eating them. They're coming off nice and easily. Look at the color. Let me shine this thing real quick for you. Look at this. Use some of that new fall merch. The fall merch really gets really perfectly shiny. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful it is. Absolutely insane. Fantastic apple, you need to get this one in. So we've got a bunch more apples we can grab. I think that's enough for now. Look at the size of this fat guy though. This is, a, this is one of the biggest ones in the tree. you love to see it. Right below us, we've got the Alibaba watermelon getting massive. The underside is still pretty pale. It'll start getting more color as it starts to ripen. We still have another watermelon that's about the same size too. So in a little while, we're gonna have just pounds and pounds of watermelon. The Honeycrisp is still holding some apples. I'm gonna let those ones stay for now, but I, I just love this tree so much. Tuck looks like he's gonna go meet his buddy at the fence. But look how many things we've harvested so far right here. This is just the beginning. This is what we have. We still got a lot more stuff to grab. We're gonna grab the boss, get him a little water because I know he's thirsty and then keep harvesting. Here he is, the little boss here. He was working. He's always supervising, but he's also the head of security, the guardian of the garden. So he's gotta make sure no one's trying to get into the garden. So yeah, he, he was on security duty right there. Sometimes we don't like to show him when he's that big and scary because uh, you know we don't wanna scare some of the you guys watching. If you guys love seeing the little boss in the videos, hit the subscribe button and uh, spam some hearts down low. He's always bringing a joy to our faces and stuff. It's just, uh, without him out here, uh, it just would not be as much fun. He's in a really curious mood, so he's like sniffing everything on every fence line. He's just, uh, I think he's having fun out here. So are we. Let's grab some zucchini though. This plant has just been putting so much food out. It's crazy. You can see it's starting to get a little bit of powdery mildew late in the season, but it's still, producing a lot of food, which is like all you could really hope for. Let me grab a couple more of the white scallop squash too. Look at these back here. Nice one here, another nice one here. Like I talked about in some of my other videos, you need to get this one in the ground as well. The flavor is so fantastic. A super old heirloom variety passed down from the Native Americans, a true gift that we need to take advantage of. Let me get in here because I know I got some, some peppers ready. So the keyhole raised bed has got a little tricky to get into, but we'll still maneuver our way into here and grab some of the delicious snacks, like this massive pepper. Look at this thing. <laughs> you love to see it. More white scallop squash back there. Two more right here. You can see them doing real nice, but look up above us right here, the tomato tree. This tomato tree has seen better days the wind and the weight of the actual tomatoes has started to pull this thing down and bend it. Fortunately, this is a, uh, a bamboo, so it has a little give to it, but it's just getting so heavy because we allowed a lot of the tops at the top of the plant to you know, spread out in different directions so we can get a lot of fruit, but it's getting a little top heavy, heavy because of that as well. Still, a lot of fantastic tomatoes. This is the variety that we use to grow the tomato tree because it does so fantastic late into the season. You need a good late season producer because you need all that time to be able to get massive tomato plants that produce insane amounts of food. Right below us right here, sweet potatoes. We'll be harvesting these later. Sweet potatoes next to the boss. This is a nice spot to hang out, nice and cool. Right, man? So we're gonna get the sweet potatoes a little late. You can see what the birds did to the grapes in the back. That's why we had to harvest all the other grapes. They're just getting way too greedy with the grapes. Come this way, we got a bunch more stuff to grab. So some of our late season pears, a little small, but we'll still get some nice pears from these. Smaller than I would hope them to be, but these are an Asian pear, so they're not supposed to get huge. Another same variety, the tomato tree one. Look how tall and strong this one is. We had to actually restake this one because it was getting so heavy. So if you notice, we put in just like a stake here just to strengthen it up a bit. Seems to be helping a lot. Take a peek and a peer at the <laughs> tomato trellis. Look how 
productive. And look how massive and beautiful these tomatoes look in the fall. I mean, there's still so many tomatoes to grab. These lunchbox tomatoes right here, great size, great flavor. So there's just so much food for this time of the year. Every year, it seems like we're getting bigger harvests and we're getting more food. And that's just because every year, not only does our knowledge and understanding compound, but also all the effort and work that we put in of building good soil, building good soil structure, it's all starting to come together. So just the refinement of the years has really started to pay off lately. Check our beds behind us. We've done a much better job of timing things. So this is the fall, going to be the fall garden in the future. You'll see we have all this kale, broccoli, cabbages, lettuce. This is all going to be food in the future. The only major mistake right here is that I don't have my mulch down yet. But that's enough about the fall stuff. Let's talk about what we still have ready that needs to be harvested. Like these apples. Look at these right here. Beautiful. They still need a little bit more time, but gorgeous apples. Come over here. I want to grab some peppers. Here's the Zulu pepper. So I call this one the purple beauty all earlier in the season, but this is actually the Zulu one. I've got a purple beauty in a different location. Look at these beautiful little purple peppers. Fantastic flavor, good size and just beautiful all around. Look at the colors. So the colors at this time of the year, the fall colors are so beautiful. You've got the deep reds, the dark greens. It's just, uh, it's so satisfying to the eye. We've got some eggplants. I know at this eggplant down here, let's grab a few. These little white eggplants, the Japanese whites. I love these little guys. Again, nice more colors. Here's a bigger size one. Look at that. It's so funny when food is white. Two different kinds of uh, veggies, completely white. Looks like this pepper has seen better days. Got a little softer. That's okay. We'll have to let Tuck snack on that one. But look at this bell pepper. Look at the mistake I made here. I did not uh, tie this thing up enough, but look how much fruit it's going to have. This thing is just going to be massive harvest. This looks like the Gilboa orange. I love this pepper so much, but I need to stake this thing up. Just too much weight. Now, come on, boy. Let's keep going. He obviously wants a snack and you know his favorite snack. Let's go grab him one right here. We got a bunch of carrots in here. This guy needs his carrot fix. So we'll grab some nice little carrots in here. Give him his fix. All right, boy. So you can hey, snack in and have that nice smile on his face. You can see some of his uh, head is getting wet from brushing through all the leaves from the morning dew. That's like the, I think that's so cute when you can see the morning dew on his little face. Such a good guy. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. This is what we grabbed today. Look at all the grapes, just an insane amount. And look at all the bees and the bugs and everything that are trying to move around this to get at the grapes. Look at them. The bees and the wasps, they just love them because there's so many sugar, so much sugar in it. It's just a... Uh, it's food that everyone wants to get into. Nectar of the gods. Me and Tuck had such a blast making this video. We love making the harvest videos because it's like uh, all the effort that we put in the spring, all the investments that we made, this is what you get out of it. So it's such a good feeling to be able to actually, you know, get something from the effort and the work that you put into. And it's here. I mean, you can't deny it. And you can just taste it. It's, uh, this is homegrown. You can't get this stuff in the store. You just can't, it doesn't taste the same and it doesn't have the same feel. And it's not as rewarding because you weren't a part of the whole entire process. Me and Tuck, again, had so much fun out here. We're really excited about this uh, fall merch. Grab one of the shirts at jamesprigioni.com. Support the channel and just sport the fall merch all season long. If you get it now, you'll be able to wear it all season. Grab a long sleeve shirt, grab a sweatshirt, grab a t-shirt, whatever you want. And me and Tuck wanted to thank one of our new channel members, Douglas Foster. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for having your hand in this harvest. The boss is back there hanging out. You can see him laying down. So it's hot out today, but if you could find a nice area like he's at where it's cool, digs himself a little hole and you can catch that nice breeze. Oh man, it's a, it's a beautiful day and it's a blessing to be out here. Me and Tuck want to let you know to hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, and again, don't forget to check out the merch at jamesprigioni.com. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.